Hi, everybody. I am Todd Gressley, the gallery director here at AO5 Gallery in Austin, Texas. And this is an unprecedented interview with an amazing artist who is coming all the way from us across the pond in England. We're being joined by Nick BC. Hello, Nick. How are you? Nice to, see, nice to meet you, my American friends. I hope you're yeah, all okay and healthy. Too. Well, uh, thank you. And you as well. You know, uh, this is my first interview with an artist for Todd Talks that I've actually not met in person. And uh, which, which normally I don't do. Normally I go to shake hands first and, and then they come into the gallery. But you're doing something different, exciting, had to have you. And you were supposed to be here during South by Southwest, but of course the world happened and you couldn't join us. So it's really nice to meet you virtually now, Nick, for the first time. Yeah, thanks. I'm, so, I'm sorry the trip didn't happen, but maybe there's a, a higher being telling us not to do it and we'll do it next year. Yeah, so um, first thing I want to talk about is the fact that you do something that truly nobody else does, except for a lot of our frontliners right now, of course. You are an x-ray artist. Explain to everyone what you do, why you're different, why it's special. Uh, well, it's pretty simple, really. Um, I like to do sort of internal inspections and investigations of the world that surrounds us. Um, I think it's quite interesting when you look at an object and discover how it's made, why it exists, whether it's made by man or by nature. If you take away all the superficial surface fluff and look at the innards of it, I think it's like a metaphor for life. Like when you're really happy, it's when you're with your loved ones and you feel comfortable and secure. And because an x-ray travels through an object and you see it from the inside out. So to do an x-ray art, you have to have a subject and you have to x-ray it. So x-ray is dangerous. I mean, speaking of dangerous, you did a Michael Jackson one, which is great. And we'll, we'll probably show that <laughs> and talk about it later. But you do a very dangerous type of art. So you, explain how you get your subjects, where they go, and how you make art out of it. Yeah, yeah, it is dangerous. When, my, uh, when I said to my girlfriend, now my wife, that I was going to be doing this for a career, she said, you're crazy. You'll end up with testicles the size of watermelons and we'll have kids with three heads. But I've got, I've got normal sized testicles and my children have normal, I've only got one head. So um, it, I do manage the danger. I'm, I'm glad you managed it because we, I'm glad you managed it because we need you on the planet because Good. you're one of those extraordinary artists that I love having here at AO5 Gallery in Austin. And, and so when, when you bring in a human, because a lot of the work, you know, as you can see behind me, there are people involved. Are, are they protected? Do you say we can only do this one time? How, how does that process work when you bring them in? Well, I think at this stage, Todd, it's, I think you should meet my, uh, my assistant and uh, let her explain. So stay right there. Okay, I'll be right here. <laughs> I can't wait to see who the assistant is. <laughs> I'm like, this should be really great. I think so too. I knew it. So here she is. Here she is. Here's my venerable assistant, Frida. Hey, Frida. Nice What's to up? meet you. Nice to meet you too, Frida. Yeah, so Frida, 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 um, she stars in all my x rays. If you look behind you, you'll see two cowboys sitting in the back of a pickup truck. And those cowboys are, in fact, Frida. Oh, okay. All right, Good. So, so uh, yeah. It's a transgender artwork, what you have behind you. So Frida, so, Frida, Frida, Frida was a woman when she was alive. Oh, okay. But she, um, uh, I can't x-ray living people because of the amount of radiation I use to create such a beautiful people. They'd be dead in three months. So I have to work with a stiff. In the, in the early days, did you use yourself or real people? Uh, yeah, I've done, when I was really young, um, I had to do... Um, one of my famous x-rays is a um, finger, and um, that's my own hand. Well, I, I'm, I'm really glad that um, uh, Frida donated her body to your, your craft, because... Uh, I'd, be, I'd be lost without her. So you don't just do people and vehicles. I mean, you, I, you've got these awesome, amazing bags with you know the hidden objects inside, you've done flora, fauna. Um, talk to us about your subject matter. Why you choose what you choose? Well, 
I've been doing it for, I don't know, 25 years. I'm quite an old guy. When I first started experimenting with x-rays, I just picked up anything and x-rayed it to get up, to understand the technical side of it. Um, and I built up like a quite a big sort of resume portfolio of different x-rays. And that was quite a good way to start. But when you want to take yourself seriously as an artist, you have to sort of work by subject matter. So now I try to work, I do less work, but I think I do better work because I try to think of an idea. And sometimes those ideas are good, sometimes they're not. Well, you've done like jumbo jets and buses. I know you can't wheel a, a bus into the studio. So explain how you do these massive vehicles and, and people inside. So basically um, with an x-ray, uh, it's the same size process. So the image on the film comes out exactly the same size as the object. Perhaps in a minute we could do a demonstration and that will make more sense to the viewers. Sure. But basically, basically, the bigger the object, the more work. A full like size we, car we, is months, months of work. It takes months for a car. Yeah. So, so a, a, a bus with all those people could take many, many months. Well, the most, the, the most complicated thing about X-Ray in that bus was getting approval from US Customs because it was, um, I X-rayed the bus with a machine that, that plies the border between the American, uh, between America and Mexico. And it's a mobile X-ray machine that can X-ray trucks and they're looking for contraband and, hit, and immigrants. And I had to get access to that truck and it's, um, uh, it's basically uh, commissioned by US Customs to a secret technical brief so I was called up to the US Embassy in London and they asked me all these personal questions they knew everything about me you know why did you miss your three payments on your mortgage you got arrested for a fight outside a discotheque when you were 17 I knew all the nasty things about my life um, but I told them the truth and they, they let me do it because obviously with, with x-ray seriously though with x-ray it's quite a good um, a good resource to use sure. because it's used in medicine which, as we all know at the moment, is particularly important. And it's used in defence. And governments spend shitloads on defence. So there's innovation in x-ray all the time. And they want to know why you're so interested in having a giant x-ray machine. And you're trying to say, I'm just an artist. But they're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just a, I, yeah. The, all your transgressions, everything you've ever done, they've got a record of. And they're looking at your past to make sure they're going to allow you to, to use this equipment. Yeah, and I'm a, regu and in, I'm a pretty regular guy, really, you know. So I told them the truth and they, it literally stamped the file approved in front of me and I was allowed to do it. Well, that's fascinating. I didn't know that about you. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done, my, done my research <laughs> before you were so in the like, gallery. Like, like, like many artists, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fusing um, art and science. So throughout my career, a lot of scientific boffins have really helped me out. Um, they don't quite understand what I'm doing, but they, they believe in in experimentation and innovation. And that's the thing I think that's allowed me to take x-ray to somewhere else where like nobody really has x-ray cars before and planes. So um, I couldn't do that without being allowed access to some pretty important kit, kit that I can't afford, kit that I have to hire, you know, it's dangerous. What you're doing is dangerous. That's why Frida's with you. Um, but here's what, here's what the, people of the world need to know about your art. And I can't stress this enough for the last 20 some years doing this professionally is when people come in and they see your art or another person that does limited editions, they come in and see a signature and they see, like the one behind me, there's nine of them in the world. The people, people are like, you know, I only buy originals. You have to explain to people now, you don't have originals basically, you have to make limited editions of your work and you make them very limited, very small amounts. Um, explain to them why there's no originals and why you should uh, purchase a limited edition uh, before they're gone. Well, the, the, the work behind you consists of somewhere between, a fi between 500 and 1,000 separate x-rays. So if I were to release those originals, it would just look a mess. Um, sure. We spend, we spend months x-raying the car and then we spend more months assembling all those disparate parts together to make the final image. So really, it's like a photographic process. So um, for business reasons, because if I just did one, you know, my work is, I wouldn't say it's expensive, but it's a, a serious investment. Um, so if you were just buying one, it would be an incredibly serious investment. So to make that business model work, I do an addition of nine, which 
allows me to get back my investment in creating the image because sure. I have to hire the equipment, I have to pay post-production staff, you know, I've got to eat, kids, blah, blah, blah. So um, that's why we do uh, editions. It's something that allows me to create um, the, the investment by collectors of buying an edition funds the next project. And so you keep going and keep going forward. But from a, a collector's point of view, when I say there's only nine, there is only nine. Because right. if I did 10, if I did 10, it's fraud and my career would be over. I just wouldn't do it. Well, I mean, there are artists, and I don't want to say any names, that would do an edition of 8,995. And, you know, it gets ridiculous. But at the same time, I think about the neighborhood that I live in. There are probably 430 people. And if there's only nine in the whole world of this, this is why buying one of your pieces is practically like buying an original because there's so very few that you do. And it makes your collectors really feel special, you know, that they're hand signed and numbered. And then I want to talk to you about what substrate they're on because I'm going to tell a funny story. You said it's a piece this big and somewhere in a warehouse between you, Frankfurt, Germany, New Jersey, and Texas, somewhere in there, they set that big ass box on the floor and a forklift rolled over it because we saw the tire tracks on the crate. And when we opened it, even though we opened it up, the piece was intact. It had bent the limited edition. <laughs> it had bent it because the, the forklift literally ran over. We had tire tracks on the crate. But this substrate you print on or put the limited edition on, whatever you do, and I'll let you explain it, is so high quality that even though a forklift ran over it, it was barely damaged. It was damaged enough that it's not, you know, good. We had to be destroyed. But what are you putting these x-rays on to make them so fantastic? Because the quality is unreal. Well, thank you. Your last point is the most important point. I think the quality, the most, you know, if I'm going to invest in something by art, it has to be beautiful. And the most important thing is the quality of the print. And the quality of the print is unsurpassable. It's the best print in the world. It's a chromogenic photograph, which is guaranteed to last 120 years. And that is sandwiched. It's a sandwich. It's got plexi on the face, which gives you that luminous with reflective quality that I love really sits the, they almost look like light boxes don't you think you know with the amount of depth of black in them and then on the back is a, a, a material called dye bond which is aluminum with plastic and all that is for really to keep it flat and then I love the minimal way that they just sort of float on the wall it's quite um, a simple cool aesthetic I don't like fussy ornate frames and things like that I like my work I like the image to speak to people rather than the, the frame I say that a lot to people. Let the art speak first and framing speak secondly. Um, now, you've taken like the piece behind me, which is great for Texas, by the way. I know it's like the last one available in the world because there's only nine of them, but you've taken uh, Frida, made her into cowboys, and this truck with all the detail. I mean, you can see the bottles in the back. The detail of your work is extraordinary, you, but you make something hard and um, uh, every day and you create this ghostly soft uh, empowering but I can't explain the impact that your artwork makes like when you do a flower you expect the flower to be soft and whatnot but then you do a piece with a purse and a handgun in it but it's still ghostly and soft was it something you planned ahead or is it something you had an aha moment like wow I'm gonna do this the rest of my life well, it's a great question, Todd. And the, um, the secret really is the fact that I do things in little parts and put it all together, which allows me to x-ray different parts of the whole object. For instance, the car behind you, I can x-ray Frida at a different um, exposure level to the rest of the engine of the car. The engine of the car is made of cast iron, or the gearbox of the car is made of cast iron. The engine is made of steel, which is really heavy and thick. You need a lot of radiation to get through that. So x-ray machines on max, burning, smoke coming out of it and everything like that. But with, uh, with, the, with the human body, and particularly clothing, it's very delicate. So you just have a little bit of x-rays just dribbling out. So the exposure level for the clothes or the cowboy hat or even the straw, the, the hay bales in the back of the, in the, back of the pickup there, that's just a little bit of x-ray. But the engine in the car, that's a frightening amount of x-ray. That's, that's wow. when it's dangerous. 
when you're x-raying dense objects like engines and um, planes and motorbikes. And so I didn't know that you had to do, see, because I'm not, clearly I'm an art guy. Now I didn't know that, to think about that, that the engine, you got to like slam the x-ray and then the hay bales, it's, it's light and that, it comes down to density. If I, x-ray, if, I, if I x-ray the engine and the hay bales together, if I x-rayed at the right exposure for the engine, the hay bales would completely disappear. Wow. If I x-rayed at the right exposure for the hay bales, the engine would just be a white block. There wouldn't be any information in it. Wow. Okay, so, so th- yeah. this is really making sense to me. Again, you know, this, this interview is a bit unprecedented because like, you're the first artist I haven't met in person. I remember when you reached out to me, again, as a, I, I mean, not as an art person, as a regular human being, anybody that just collects art that's not a professional, I looked at it like, I'm not sure what I'm seeing yet. I don't know if this is, you know, a trend, if it's something quirky. And the more I looked into your work and then reached out to you and asked some questions, the more I said, I think that this person is doing something that, I just got the chills. You're doing something that is beyond what anybody's really done before. And proof in the pudding, you're in with the big boys, you, Victoria and Albert, uh, what is it called? Fo- Photographica, how do they say in Stockholm? Photographica. Photographica, yeah. <laughs> Photographica, yeah. They're, they're, actually, they're actually opening in uh, New York, London, and uh, Moscow. Wow. So that, that's, that's um, yeah, so thank, thank you, thank you. That was my career highlight today. I had a, a major retrospective exhibition at Photographica Stockholm, which is the world's biggest um, photographic museum, which yeah, is it's even bigger than your gallery, Todd. It's even yeah, bigger it's than a 05 bigger. gallery. <laughs> we're, we're a small and, eight thousand something square feet here. You know, we're you small. Know. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's Texas, I mean, it's Texas, Texas big. It's a Texas <laughs> size gallery. This is a Texas size gallery. Yeah. So the, the great thing about that show was that um, it's not a uh, you know it's a paying museum, and my show uh, was on for ten weeks. And over a hundred thousand people paid fifteen US dollars to go and see wow. my X-rays. Wow. Um, so that made me feel great. And uh, I had sure. royal visitors. Um, you know, it's uh, it puts you up another level. And when you deal with museums, you asked earlier about how I produce my work. This, the, the fact that I use chromogenic prints and the, and the work is properly archival, not not bullshit archival, really archival. That's important to a museum because when they acquire works for their collection. They want it to last for generations. They don't want to acquire something and 50 years later they can't show it. This is your forever art. Yeah. And then when, and when, when the V&A, the Victorian Abbey Museum from London came calling, again, it was um, a great accolade because they asked me to collaborate with them in creating exhibitions for the museum where I x-ray dresses um, for an exhibition on the fashion design at Balenciaga, as well as having my own x-ray studio that I'll show you in a minute here in my studio in Kent in um, south of London in England. I have a mobile x-ray studio in the back of a truck. I think they call them semis in America. Semi-trucks, yeah. Yeah, semi-trucks, yeah, yeah. So I've got my own mobile. So watch out, I'm coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So let's do, a, let's do a walkthrough. Let's have some fun and let's see uh, uh, where the magic happens. Okay, so we're entering my x-ray area. This room that you can see here is made of solid concrete, two feet thick solid concrete. Uh, It has a door, the red door, which weighs a ton and a quarter of made of lead and steel. And then to the side here, sorry, is my little dark room where I pro- process my x-rays. This is like an old photographer's dark room with a red light. Red light. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm, I'm gonna do a, de- do a demonstration. The thing there, the, the silver thing on the black table, that is my x-ray machine, which is powered by a generator, which you can probably hear humming in the corner. And we're gonna x-ray the radio that's on the, on the table over there. Yeah, that's small radio. Okay, so you're going to x-ray the radio right now. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to do it right now. So I'm going to go into my dark room. I'm going to get a film. Hopefully this doesn't break up as we go in here because we're going to solid concrete. I'll put this down so you can see me work. Oh, wow. I'm, oh, all, I'm nervous. I feel like I'm going to get zapped. You know, I'm like, am I, am I okay? <laughs> Even though he's in England, I'm like, am I going to get zapped? 
This is so cool. Can you, can you hear the hum? I can't, but I'm also deaf in one ear, so maybe the viewers can. Yeah. I can't hear the hum, but I can see the bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the most attractive part of my book. <laughs> so we put the film behind the echo. So you're putting film behind it. Yeah, in the black bag. In the black bag is film. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll just take the camera. You can see me. that there is black thing is film. Yeah. Yeah. It's behind the object. So the electrodes come out of here. Okay. Travel across, pass through the radio onto the film that's behind it. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay, right. cool. And that makes the image. And so now yeah. you're going to zap it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to zap it, but it looks like it's falling down. I'm just going to put a bit more tape on that. You're okay. Tape it up. It'd be embarrassing. Bit, like yeah. yeah. So before. should I leave the phone? Do you want me to leave the phone on? Why is nothing? Nothing happens, but you, okay. you want it? I can next, yeah. I'll take okay. it as a, so um, coming out of the room, hopefully the Wi-Fi is working now. So this is my door, yeah, so we have to shut the door. And as I shut the door, if you look up in the corner, there's a switch. And when that switch is engaged, the X-ray machine will work. So this is my health and safety shit, where X-ray off, X-ray imminent, X-ray on. These are the controls for the X-ray machine, yeah. Just going to check the exposure. Okay. Here we go. So this will make a noise now. Don't be scared, everyone. Okay. Um, press this button here. So this is the warning sound. The 10 seconds of warning that the echo is going to come on. Okay, and it's working. And here we're counting down the actual exposure. The x-ray takes two minutes, 40 seconds. All right, so that's why my x-rays are so detailed, because when you go in hospital and you're unfortunate enough to have a medical x-ray, so you break your leg or something, then that only takes 0.2 of a second. It's just a, and it's done. Whereas my x-rays take much longer because I use a much slower film, which creates a much more beautiful image. Wow, I'm, I'm because blown in, away in, a, in a hospital, they, they want to minimize the amount of radiation a patient sure. gets. I don't care about that. I cook, I cook my things, I nuke <laughs> them, but I get a beautiful image. I, I gotta tell you, it's hard to render me speechless. I, my, my grandmother, my parents growing up called me motor mouth. I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a bit weird. Almost, you know, it's, it's, it's photographic, but it's not like normal photography you know? it's not like normal photography what you set up is incredible i'm actually moved right now like i'm i'm moved because i love art so much and you're taking something that is scientifically uh wonderful and helpful you've taken something that's very mundane and you've you've blown me away i'm so excited i knew you did cool stuff i've tried to explain it to the clients before but this means so much more to me now i'm so excited to have you in the gallery thanks Doug. cheers yeah, the, inter the interesting thing about X-ray as well is that when Bronken discovered it, it is in fact a spectrum of light, just like the light that allows you to see what I'm pointing the camera at and me to see your beautiful face. <laughs> it's, the, the difference is, is that what we, what we see with our human eyes is reflection. Yeah, we see the light bouncing off your face, the light bouncing off my artwork behind you. X-ray is a, is a spectrum of light, but it penetrates. It goes through things. Well, and and, another and, reason it's so dangerous is you can't see it. It doesn't smell, you can't see it. Right. So, so you have to use my good friend here, a Geiger counter. Ooh, geek, 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 which geek, measures, geek. Yeah, yeah, exactly, measures, measures, measures radiation. Sure, but you're showing yeah. what's there all the time. People touch their elbow yeah. And they don't think about their what their elbow looks like, and you're showing people what everything looks like that's right in front of them, but they don't think about it ever. Superman's got it; you can see it. That's true. <laughs> I love it. So we've done so, that. So it's now it's now clean. The, the light's green. Yeah. yeah. X-ray off. Yeah. It's it's done. 
So I'm going to go in to the okay. room. This is where it's heavy. I and now the heavy door. Everybody. Nick is safe. Uh, let's hope so. So Don't just to remind, me. there's the door. Okay. So I'm going to go in. It might break down. Let's see. I'll put the phone there. I'm grabbing the x-ray. I'm actually nervous about having like. I'll take this. I'll take this into the dark room now. I'm not sure the camera will work in the dark room, but we'll try. Okay, welcome to the dark. Here's the dark. It has to get the dark. It gets very dark. The red light. Can you see me? We can see what you're. You can see moving around. Okay, now we're. There we, okay, we're good. All right. Sorry, that was pretty boring, wasn't it? So, I put I put the X-ray in that machine there. Which is my film processor. Okay. And it goes in this end. It goes in this end, and it drops down into vertical baths of developer wash, fix, fix, wash, and then dries and pops out. That whole process takes about six minutes. Wow. So we have I to mean, wait. Another, another another thing that's different about my process is um, it's it's much it's much slower, you know, than normal photography. Um, show everybody the, the piece on the wall, the, the middle finger one. I have a limited edition of that on my wall, too. Yeah. So this, is a, this, is, this is a gold one. It's beautiful. I can see the gold reflection in it. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's, your, it's your message to the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, all these speakers in my, in my studio, that's something I'm working on. I'm do, I want to do a project of x-rays where the, the, the speakers vibrate. I'm going to do lenticular prints of. So as you look inside the speaker, the speakers. Wow! And you said you're doing lenticulars of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you explain to people what a lenticular is. I, I uh, movie studios use them, etc. Tell people what a lenticular is. So a lenticular is. Um, uh, I'll show you what a lenticular is. Lenticular. As you look at it, it changes color. Yes. And they look three-dimensional. These are x-rays of muscles. And I've got another one. This is my office. Hello, office. There's the toilet. And there's the lenticular some grapes. And that changes color. Yeah. Green grapes, green. red grapes. Green grapes. That's really cool. And then a lot of lenticulars in, in my, the past that I've, I've dealt with remind me of um, lenticulars in like movie theaters when like movie Face Off came out. They would have a lenticular, the one face, another face left and right. They're actually, um, is it a triangular, uh, like a zigzag? That when you're on the right, it's all green, but when you're left, it's all purple? Yeah, so basically with lenticular, you can do, you can do, the simplest lenticular is a flip, where you just flip from one image to the other other image. I've done a lenticular sequence of Michael Jackson moonwalking, which is in fact seven images. So he moon he moonwalks. I can do that, by the way, really well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. I, can, I can moonwalk yeah, like um, no other. <laughs> uh, but I think the interesting thing about um, about lenticular, a, it's really old technology. It was invented in the 1930s. Um, I like uh, going back and revisiting that, but it's it brings the pictures to life. And because I'm working with dead bodies all the time, I like bringing things to life. I I, I love that you work with dead bodies all the time and you bring them to life. But you've done some really important characters. I mean, we've got kind of Godfather figures, Sean Connery, Indiana Jones. Are you allowed to say that it's Indiana Jones, or do we have to be like it's an adventurer? Or how how does that no, how does that I, um, I look forward to um, uh, whoever owns the rights to the Indiana Jones films. Is that um, Lucas or whoever? Yeah, it's uh, Lucas. Spielberg. Yeah, it's yeah, Spielberg or whatever. Uh huh. Come on, take me, take me to court. I could do with the publicity. I mean, a lot of people. Apparently, apparently, Jeff Koons got done for doing Mickey Mouse, didn't he? Well, you could paint a Mickey Mouse, one Mickey Mouse every day, and sell it for a thousand dollars if you want. But if you make, you know, a T-shirt with Mickey Mouse on it and sell it, Disney will come and do your pants off. So. Yeah, <laughs> it is an artistic interpretation of um, Indiana Jones. There you go. It's an artistic interpretation. What'd you lose? Your 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 my, dignity my or your pride? 
There you go. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool, yeah? I'm slick, don't you think? I'm pretty slick. You're so slick, man. So, um, so the, but the images are really spot on. The um, 007 image is just, I mean, it's killer. Anybody that likes the James Bond series has to have this piece. It's just the whole, like, it's, it's great. Sean Connery. It's, it's, based, it's based on the best Bond, Sean Connery. Yeah. 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 yeah, agreed. Tell us what is something on your plate that you were looking forward to making an x-ray of? Well, um, at the moment, um, I'm working on using uh, medical equipment to make my portraits look like they were taken in a hospital in the 1960s. So uh, Humphrey Bogart goes into the um, emergency room and has an x-ray done. So I'm going backwards in time, really. I'm not um, going forwards. Uh, I like I like the fact of making what I do is quite high tech complex, so I like making the end result looking pretty low fi and basic. It, I like that countenance, you know, the conversation between innovation and borrowing from the past. If you look behind you, the car that's a 1948 pickup truck. I could go and do a, a brand new one, but the trouble is by doing a brand new one, it's, it's out of date in five years. Whereas that pickup truck behind you will only become more desirable over time. I can't wait to open the doors and let people see this piece in person. Um, but, I mean, they can also snatch it up after this interview. It's not a problem. Yeah, thanks. I'm also, I'm also, so I'm, I've done some more cars. I've done some sexy cars. I've, done a, I've just done the G-Wagon that you've seen. I've done a um, Lamborghini Miura, um, Porsche 911, um, a Jeep, a CJ Jeep, an American CJ Jeep. I'm going to be doing this year... Poker, a poker school. I've done. I've got a piece called Rat Pack, which is quite um, based on Sinatra and um, uh, Dean Martin and uh, all those guys. So um, I've taken that further, and I've done like a poker game. I'm doing a portrait of a bartender, cocktail bartender, with all the all the optics and the shakers, and you know. Well, I'll tell you, you should use Frida. I I pr I, I told you I would try not to bring this up, but I'm bringing it up. You should do a version of Kate Bush, Wuthering Heights, 1978, with her dance as a lenticular. <laughs> It'll sell yeah. like mad. In with England. a flowing dress. Yeah. Yes, you should do a what? Kate it's Bush. Clear. It's me, it's I'm me. Kathy, I'm Kathy. Kathy. Oh, come, on. come on. You should do <laughs> Wuthering Heights. I'm telling you, it will sell like hotcakes in England. I'm on all the Kate Bush fan sites and they would love it. It would be so awesome. I told you I wasn't going to bring up Kate Bush, but I brought up Kate Bush. I had to talk about Kate Bush. No, she, she is great, though. She, I do love her. I do, too. She's, She's my favorite of all time. One last question, because I know we're going to go back in and uh, look at the x-ray, right? In the, in the red room, dark room, I mean. Is there something that you've ever thought of that is so challenging that you can't do it yet, but one day you'll be like, I'm going to get it done? Submarine. Yeah, I mean, wow. Okay. I, I, again, I can't. <laughs> I can't grasp it, but yeah, submarine. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, a, a, a submarine would be cool because a submarine has got all the all the components. You know, it's got all the little chambers and things. You can't where you sleep, you eat, where you work. They're all different compartments in one thing. There'd be so much to see. Wow, that'd be fascinating. I mean, I'm uh, I'm already nuts about what you do, and it, again, I love every artist that I have in here. And I, there's a reason why people are in AO5 Gallery, but you're doing something that has just really blown my mind, and it's hard to it's hard well, that, to that, that means that. a lot to me, Todd, because because you have to you have to tell people about what I do, and the fact that you're into it and you believe in it it means a lot to me. So thank you. Hey, thank you for uh, thinking we're a great gallery to be, and I can't thank you enough. So should we um, go yeah, back let's, to let's our see the intro? Yeah, let's go back to our funny side here. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. So, All right. Here we go. I can't wait. Into the dark room. Okay, into the dark room. And here is the x-rays at the back. I picked up the x-ray, and we'll bring it out and put it on a light box so you can see it. Wow. Uh, and let's that, put it up properly. That is the radio that you just cooked in the x-ray room. There it is. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you can see the speakers and all the 
electronics. And so, so the viewers the see what's happening. This is the actual size of the radio. Yeah. yeah, it's not manipulated. It's not bigger. It's not smaller. It's the actual size. And even then, I, I've messed it up. So I've cut the corner off of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I so, want them to see. So, I want them to see that this piece behind me, when you put it together, the original was the actual size of the truck. Let me get the radio. Oh, I'll put the radio next to it so you can understand that. Yeah, do that. yeah. Show them. Put it right next to the radio so they can see that they're actual. It's the actual size. So they can see that doing a bus. You have to put it together actual size to make a limited edition of it. There you go. There's the radio on the left and the radio on the right. Yeah, there it is. Boom. The one, it's the exact same size. I'm fascinated. Okay. I love it. I did this for you guys from Texas. Okay. Yeah, I love the boot. That's for you guys. Is that available as a limited edition yet? It, it could be. I'm thinking about making like a country and western singer. A country and western singer on like a set on a stool with a guitar, cowboy boots, that hat I showed you. And you can, you have a it's mobile. It's probably a bit cheesy, but that's how us English see you Americans. I'm sorry. No, it's, to not, say that. it's not cheesy. I mean, I remember <laughs> I was in Egypt for a few months and I remember them asking me how many horses I had everywhere I went. How many horses do you own? I was like, I don't know. You got, got a, a ranch. Mobile. You live in Texas. You got a ranch. Everyone's got a ranch, haven't they? I got what? what? A ranch. A ranch. Oh, a ranch. A ranch. A ranch. Like, not ranchy. A ranch. A ranch. <laughs> a, ra a ranch. You got A ranch. <laughs> I can't with you, dude. A ranch. A ranch. I've got, I've got a ranch. <laughs> um, I speak the Queen's English, don't you know, don't you know? I mean, you did invent got... the language, so you're, you're, you get that. There are a lot of ranches in Texas, to say the least. There's a yeah. So you've got a mobile x-ray machine. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Could you could you bring it to Texas? It's technically possible. Um, it's a big thing. It obviously, it's lined with lead, so it's heavy because um, uh, the lead traps the radiation. Um, well, it would have to go on a boat. We couldn't go on a plane, so it would take a while to get there. Well, I mean, you could secure and, and one here. And we drive on the other side. <laughs> in you, have, front, you, know? you could secure <laughs> one here in the States and then do work here. And then you could. Would you ever think about... Um, doing commissions for people like they say I want you to x-ray my old turntable you know a record player and you, you of go course yeah yeah no I, yeah. I, I, I do that all the time um, I don't do I don't do living people so I can't I, you know I've had people ask, you know can you x-ray me in my wife and I won't do it because they both die <laughs> I, I'm, I, not, I, I'm not kidding you unless no, I've, I had, I've it. had some strange I've, requests I've had, I've, I've had some strange requests I've gotten odd requests in my career. Believe me, I know that's a real request. Yeah. I believe, but but you would do things like objects that would work. Like that's really a cool idea. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like I want my yeah. boat. I want my boat X-rayed. You're like, all right, you know. I I, I, like I did a I did, a, I did a, I've got a piece which is an X-ray of a Hermes Birkin bag. Now I can't afford a Hermes Birkin bag. They're about eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollars. The the handbag, and this lady this lady gave it to me to X-ray. And when I x-rayed it, I put in it two cents and I gave Genius. her the image. And she, she, she said, why have you done that? I said, well, because you spent all your money on your handbag. And Genius. she loved it because of that little, that little, you know, that little touch in it. And that, that was a commission, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was very smart. That was very smart. I love it. Hey, um, I, I really was nervous about interviewing you and having you show your process to people because I like to keep things a bit secret with what artists do so you're unique and interesting. However, I'm not afraid to expose what you're doing to people because you've created this X-ray empire that is really, um, that nobody could just redo what you're doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated with it. And I, I thank you for sharing um, what you're doing to create this awesome art because people love it and they, they come in and they're, but now I think people are really going to know what you're doing and, and the, the history and the years it's taken you to build your craft. And I'm, I, I thank you genuinely from the bottom of my heart. I'm really, I'm really honored. Well, no, it's my pleasure, Todd. Um, what I do is a bit weird. Um, and some people think it's just some Photoshop plugin you can download off the internet. Um, but it's a bit more complicated than that. So thanks for taking the time and trouble to find out how we do what we do. Yeah, I, I cannot wait until all the, the zombie apocalypse is over so we can have you here in the States and you can shake hands with people and 
show them your art. We'll have a great big opening for you like we're going to do in March. I'm really excited to have you back. Uh, or have I know, you I'd love to. I, I really want to come to Austin. I really want to come to Austin. Yeah, well, I you're going to. such a great place. We're going to make sure you have your barbecue and your um, rodeo time and whatever else we do. I don't know what we do. Right? <laughs> I just but want to hang out. I want to see the city. Yeah? It's, a great, it's city. a great place. Yeah, yeah. It's a great city. And even though it's changed over the last 20 years, it's still Austin. And you'll feel like you're in the West, but you feel like you're in the big city. It's a very strange mix. Now let's make something special for Texas. Oh. So that when I come, there's something <laughs> unique. You make something special? Yes. You got, I mean, the cowboy boot was cool. Cowboy hat's cool. Yeah, but maybe not something so cliche. Maybe we should do Texas in the 21st century, not Texas in the 19th I century. Say, I was going to say you could do Longhorn Skull. It would be uh -huh. huge. A Longhorn Skull would be huge. Or Willie Nelson. Braid, yeah, Willie Nelson. Guitar. Yeah, right. So get Frida with the braids and the guitar. Just saying, okay. Willie Nelson and I think Willie Nelson and Longhorn will be killer sales because you know Hook'em Horns, Austin. But I thought right. you were saying so. Just a long, just a Longhorn skull. Yeah, the Longhorn skull. Yeah, it'd yeah. be killer. It'd be killer, like killer. I thought you were saying, do you need to know an expression when you get here? I said you need to know y'all and you need to know yeehaw. Y'all, yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all and Yeehaw, boom, and you're a Texan, truly. So, hey. Get um, off your horse and drink your milk. That's, that's, that's a new one for me. <laughs> I've learned a lot of things. I've learned a lot of things today. I keep looking at Camille. Usually, when I'm doing these interviews, I can't see Camille. So, it's, I'm, I'm doing a lot of this because we're. She's we're got, don't we're, tell me she's got her head in her hand, shaking her head. Pan. I can't I, believe it. What are we going to do with all this? <laughs> she's thinking about how she's going to have to edit this, this video. I. I'm in stitches, dude. I cannot thank you enough. I'm going to sign us off. I'm going to let you um, say goodbye to the viewers, and then I'm going to sign us off. So say bye to your fans. Okay. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to find out about Nick VG and his art. I love all my friends in America. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Thanks, y'all. So I'm Todd Gressley here at AO5 Gallery. Uh, I've had an incredible interview with Nick VC. It, it's an honor. And it's a privilege because uh, I, I haven't been able to see anything like this online about his art. So thank you, Nick. Thank you, viewers. Um, I cannot wait to meet you in person and signing off from AO5 in Austin, Texas. And Nick in England, we'll see you all later.